Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. K. Anil Kumar, Assistant Professor, Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. Today, we are going to talk on module Law and Social Control from paper Social Cultural Anthropology. In this model, you will able to learn or understand about the different types of social action. You also able to learn the nature of primitive law and you also able to learn the types of leadership and you also understand the adjudication of disputes. The primary objective of this module is to give a basic understanding to the students about the laws and social control. It also attempts to provide an informative background about the different types of social sanction, forms of government, nature of primitive law, etc. No society exists without a framework of social organization. It provides an order which operates among its members who share some common convictions to undergo through a regulated life. Social control is a necessary to protect an individual against himself as well as to save the society from coerce. It is the process by which a social order can be established and sustained. In each and every society to control the conduct of individuals and to compel them to behave in a conformity certain kinds of mechanisms are found. They force and restrain the members from doing wrong. This mechanism can be broadly divided into two categories, law and government, religion. The former acts as an external means of control where the latter exerts an internal control. Law and government comprise of the political organization. Human life is full of conduct and tensions. To hold the integrity of the group and also to protect the group against the neighboring communities, law and order is needed. Societies at present entirely depend on political institutions to, for decision and power. But in the beginning, there were nothing political and no one exercised any general authority to rule or to decide or to negotiate on behalf of the community. There was neither any state nor any government. Even no legislation was there uh, as like our civilized world. The contemporary primitives still show a more or less some setup. Nowhere among the non-literate we find any full-fledged legal system with the court, uh, the judge, the uh, barristers or the solicitors, the jury and the law books and so on. Morgan, Maine and others have denied the existence of government in the earliest stage of primitive society. They had considered this fact in the perspective of simplest society of the contemporary period. They cited the examples with reference to the societies like Andamans of Andaman Islands, the Bushman of Africa, the Yamana of Teradil, Fugo, the Eskimos of Polar Region, the Aboriginal people of Australia, etc., who live at the lowest rank of subsistence economics and lack any form of organized warfare. As there is no scope for civil law, these societies are characterized by the criminal law. This means some sort of laws prevail, there are deal with different criminal offenses. But Louis showed that the view was not correct. Absence of authority did not mean a situation of anarchy. Although these societies hardly show any trace of authority outside the family, but when an occasion arises in which collective actions is required, a leader is temporarily appointed for among the leaders, elders of the tribe. Many men of the community may be chosen for this purpose, but he should be superior of all, either for any bravery or extraordinary performances or quite simply for his uh, sculpturality. So, such a local group can be taken as a starting point for the rise of government. What is law? Law means the whole process by which rules that are recognized to be binding are maintained and enforced 
including the motives and values that influence judges and all the manifold social forces that prevent the majority of people from having to come before a judge at all when ratcliffe brown wrote some simple societies have no law although all have customs which are supported by sanctions he was thinking of a specific way of enforcing rules and also by implications defining laws and rules enforced in this way but when even prichards wrote that within a newer tribe there is a law he implied that law exists where people agree that certain actions infringe the rights of others and also agree that injuries can be made good and so disputes formally settled and the parties reconciled by the payment of compensation by implication he here defined law in terms of an institution the procedure of compensation and reconciliation if a newer is injured by a member of another tribe he is the hell to be justified in retaliating but there is a no procedure for ending the quarrel and therefore on his argument no law what kind of rules or laws every society has rules that it calls laws and others that it calls customs both are matters of knowing how people expect of them where there are what melonoski called codes codes and constables people recognize that you can do many things that other people won't like but only some of them will get you into trouble with the police that you may have many grievances against other people but you can only go to law about some of them the difficulty of definition arises where there are no courts or constables some writers on that type of society play safe by referring to customary law are we then it is a necessary to frame a definition to tell us which of these rules or laws and which not such definitions are constantly being offered examined and rejected what is called austinian definition of law the command of a sovereign obviously cannot apply where there is no sovereign and it has been rejected by lawyers in modern state as well some american writers have said that law is whatever you can expect a court to enforce but that is no good where there is are no courts the anthropologist who have contributed most of the study of law in the last two decades are the american e a hobel and the south african max glickman hobel expands radically brown's definition in a manner that would grant the possession of a law to the newer and to the other peoples where the public opinion allows and approves retaliation although there is no court to authorize punishment indeed hobel would say that there is a court what we call the bar of the public opinion hobel writes a social norm is legal if its neglect or infraction is regularly met in threat or in fact by the application of physical force by an individual group possessing the socially recognized privilege of so acting glickman dealt with this difficulty by showing that a distinction between types of societies is a different matter from the distinction between different types of rules courts and constables are legal or judiciary institutions and they are possessed in some form by every society that recognizes a rural and some others as well such as the east african age 
organized societies where the settlements of disputes the duty of elders as a body societies without court says clerkman have rules of raw law but no legal rules he calls such societies a legal the rules he refers to are those that rightly brown called jural the word comes from the latin word jus meaning a right whereas legal comes from the latin word lex meaning a law in the sense of something enacted the command of the sovereign so justice by derivation means giving people their rights rather than enforcing laws and this is somewhere in people's mind when as they often do they contrast justice and legality forms of government the different forms of government as found among the existing societies can be classified in the following ways oligarchy when the supreme power of the state is vested is the hands of a small exclusive class next monarchy when the supreme power is vested upon a single individual the king then gerontocracy when the government is run solely by the old men of the society then democracy when the supreme power rest on a representative group of the common people the elected representatives from the state form of the government then theocracy when the supreme power is endowed with the priest or other sacred specialist such such type of government shows a supernaturalistic domination over the government social control in this first we learn about types of social control society makes use of various means of social control depending upon the time and social situation for the realization of its purpose formal control formal control is law legislation military force administrative devices political educational economic etc formal social control courts state systems possess a monopoly on the use of force through systems of codified law state both forbids individuals from using force and determine how it will use force to require certain behavior from citizens when legal prescriptions are violated state has authority to fine imprison or even executes the wrong doer an authorized use of force happens crime rebellion revolution emphasizes on punishment to avoid threat to legitimacy of political and legal authority whereas state systems of government emphasize punishments some small scale society emphasize re establishing harmony informal control in informal control public opinion sympathy sense of justice norms values folk ways mores customs religions morality fashion etc agencies of social control there are following agencies of social control that is law state education folkways mores administration religion family neighborhood public opinion nature of primitive law like any other social institution law is a part of society and functionally related to the structure of that society it is a rule of conduct essentially for the stability of the society the imposition is done by an authority and accepted by all members of a community in simple societies the force of public opinion or a decision arrived at by democratic procedure is impelled on the accused the community or the council acts as the court primitive law stands exclusively on time honored customs usage and beliefs of the people 
At times, supernatural fear enhances its force. On the whole, primitive laws are essentially different from the modern laws on the following grounds. Primitive laws largely count kinship ties rather than the territorial ties. Kinship bond is highly emphasized. Both the internal and external problems are dealt with the kinship group. Clan elders possess the right to punish the offenders and settle the dispute. They look after the community for the prevention of any deviation of customary law as well as bear the responsibility of organizing the warfare. However, this law may be regarded as a primitive law which is totally different from the modern law. Primitive laws coincide with ethical principles and rooted in public opinion. Since the number of individuals is limited in such communities, they know each other quite well. Naturally, there is no scope of segmentation in the public opinion. Common sentiments are shared by all. So, the opinions of the public based on ethical norms stand as exclusively strong and compelling in the society. These opinions discriminate between good and bad and they express in tribal meetings. Primitive laws do not differentiate between the crimes and torts, that is, between the public and private wrongs, as evident in modern jurisprudence. Types of social sanction The social sanction can be broadly divided into two categories primary and secondary. Primary social sanctions are the immediate sanctions that are obtained by an individual in his society. Primary sanctions are of two types, positive sanctions that is approved behavior and negative sanction, the disapproved behavior. Both the positive and negative sanctions can again be divided into two groups, diffused and organized. Some of the social sanctions, whether they are positive or negative, are carried out following a traditional as well as organized procedure. These come under the organized group. On the other hand, sometimes society expresses the approval or disapproval of the behavior quite spontaneously. This makes up the diffused group. Every individual in the society has a desire for being praised and he avoids the hatred of his fellows. Again, one aspires to win a reward and awards a punishment that a community offers or threatens. An individual never wants to be a unworthy, disreputable, dishonorable and discourteous person. All these factors ultimately keep a cumulative general effect on the community at a large and help in restoring the equilibrium by providing a collective expression of social approval. Negative sanctions in a primitive society generate from the ethical and supernatural forces because certain acts are considered as displeasing to God which make the accused a sinner. Forms of positive sanction The common belief is that ancestor and other spiritual being is pleased by good conduct. Some believe in reward after death. Honagas is a head-hunting tribe. In that society, the individuals who hunt a greater number of heads achieve a higher position in the society. A diffuse type of positive social sanction, an individual is praised for his work. He is respected by his fellow member in the society. In case of organized positive social sanction, special honor is bestowed on a person. He is crowned or glorified in some definite ways. Forms of negative sanction It is the disapproval for the non-observance of certain social standards. In diffuse negative sanction, the force of authority is supernature. Among the Nagas, eating of a goat meat is prohibited. They believe that those who ignore this taboo, their hair become prematurely grey. Organized negative sanction is characterized by some penalties which protects the form the individuals from going 
to an immoral way and such instances of punishments also help to rectify the behavioral modes of the rest of the members in a society the nature of penalty varies from society to society on the basis of guilt you can see a figure of social sanction a social sanction is categorized into primary sanction and secondary sanction again primary sanction is categorized or divided into positive negative that is in positive approved behavior and in negative disapproved behavior again the positive uh, sanction is divided or categorized into two that is diffused organized in diffuse it is praise in organized it is honor decorations title whereas in negative sanction it is again divided into diffused and organized in diffused it is moral or ethical satire or ridicule religious or supernatural and in organized you see penal law confinement exclusion from the community loss of rights social ranks etc degradation fine infliction of bodily pain students now we'll discuss about adjudication of disputes establishment of guilt is always important for the administration of the justice a judgment essentially comprises of two parts evidence and punishment evidence the process by which the innocence or guilt of a person is established is called evidence in the primitive societies no judge or prosecutor is found who is expert in cross examination therefore to get the accurate facts people have to rely on supernatural support however the two main ways of getting the evidence are oath and ordeal oath it is a promise in the name of god for not to tell a lie it is said that if the facts furnished by a person is proved false the person will be punished by god this is a technique of compelling one to confess his own guilty voluntarily among the orans and mundas of chota nagpur an individual before producing his evidence is asked to take an oath sitting on a tiger skins or tiger's jaw ordeal it is a process of determining the guilt or innocence by submitting the accused to a dangerous or painful test under supernatural control among the primitive such tests are usually done with fire charcoal and water for instance among the orans of piece of burning charcoal is placed on the palm of two boys who are suspected of theft if one of the boy is able to bear the hot charcoal on his palm he is considered as innocent whereas the other boy is considered as guilty now punishment if any one violates the general rule of the tribe he is punished by the leaders of the community and punishment correspond to the organized negative sanction of the society the several modes of punishment can be categorized into two principal types that is trial and wear guild according to the gradation of crimes so student now we summarize the whole module as i told you the primary objective of this module is to give a basic understanding to the students about the laws and social control it also attempts to provide an informative background about the different types of social sanction forms of government and nature of primitive law laws do not change usually only the interpretations are changed in primitive societies since offenses are more concerned with the individuals in kin's group this law is chiefly designated as private law it differs from the uh, public law or a criminal law as no specialized officer is found there for the prosecution and punishment of the individuals although 
criminal law is not totally absent in the primitive societies but they are the seldom found the scope of law expands with the growth of society the traditional customs the conventions gives rise to the sanction of law with time and force thank you